Hmm. Readings programs. We get all set up here. We get going. How you guys tonight? How you guys? I see you guys. Guys, girls, aliens. You know, Martians and stuff. Alrighty. Get going on this mess. Mm -mm -mm. Wife made me some uh, spice pecans. Oh, oh, so good. So good. Been working in the lab a little bit. Uh, changing some things around. And, uh, I now can actually look at the camera and see the chat, twist chat. Now she having to look at the back of my head. Um, got a new thing I'm trying out. Get online here. All right. I'll show you what I'm going to try to do. Let me get another pecan. Tasty, tasty. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah. One more time. One more thing here. Uh, that's probably going to work very well, but we're going to give it a try. So, oh, I know what I need to do first, so. I need I need I have here a Surface Pro 3 I got a while ago from my uh, good friend Paul DiCarlo and um, I have whiteboard on it I've got whiteboard on a scene up there and we're going to see if we can easily do this if it works really well which I hope that it does and maybe at some point in the future I can uh, share it out and you guys can whiteboard with me. That'd be really cool. Oh, they're just too darn good. Sorry about this, I'd share with you if I could. I haven't figured out that bit of technology yet. What I have been doing. Make me post notes of things that I want to do. Well, not really a problem with that. It's just hard for you guys to see. I need folks to see. Also, when I draw things, I mean, that's cool and all. You see, those things we'll probably use this today as I'm describing it. But 
Um, I'd like to do something a bit better than that. What is that? What the heck? And, and one other thing I want to do. I want to do that. I also change the bit rate down to 30 frames a second. Not doing any games in my broadcaster unit has been having a hard time keeping up. <coughs> Let me know in the comments or in the chat if that's natively affecting the experience uh, only because it got to be really laggy. What do you think, Magic 8 Box? I predict a win. Ah, oh, thanks. How'd you get box on check? All right. No idea why. No, you myself. I'm just mucking around to see if things how things work. The drops work. I checked that. Looks like it. Okay. Didn't work out too well for me. So, let's get going on this. Mm. I'll switch over to my whiteboard. Okay. So, What you got going on there? Still learning how to use this thing. We get into editing mode. The idea was I was going to make this as a two to do list because you can do a few things. This is a big old long list of things. What's coming next? Talk power and routing and all those sorts of things. And you can do these things like you put some pins in there. If, it's, if I want a red pin, I can, I've got it where uh, I can draw. All right. I need to make it a little fatter, which usually I sort of do. All right. I can make it a little fatter. Let's get rid of that noise. I wonder if I can actually draw on top of that. Oh, I can. Ooh, that's good. I like that. Also got a way where I'm going to use blue. I'll make it a little fatter. And if I draw a square, it will make a square for me. 
if I draw a circle, I said if I draw a circle, it will make a circle for me. But I got to be real particular about it, I guess. I wonder if I can draw an arrow. Okay, maybe it's got some work to do. Anyway, this is my to-do list for tonight. Come on, let me get out of here. Oh, nice. This is some rudimentary junk going on right here. And what I want to get with done for the night. I'll establish a repo, a, re, a repo for the robot for the software. I'm gonna see if I can't load some test software on it because uh, um, on the uh, Bate Panda to talk to the motor controller. Uh, 3D model of the 5 volt buck converter. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it, but I got to model it before I can put it somewhere. Hmm, these nuts are so good. See if I can get a to do list on the screen, which this is probably going to work out very well. I have to do something else with that. Let me talk a power routing. What are we going to do with that? I've got some stuff showing up tomorrow night, or tomorrow. It's only supposed to be Wednesday, but i got some stuff showing up tomorrow, according to the tracker. It's going to help me route five volts in lots of places I need to have it, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. And then we'll talk what's coming next. Now, hold on. Yep, I'm going to talk what's coming next. So, I say then, these are just things, no particular order. So, why don't we do some of the first things first? I'm going to get rid of this. Yeah, why don't we do that? I'm going to transition back. So, um... <clears throat> I'll put up a link at some point when this goes to YouTube of the Houston Tech Fest. It's going on September 12th, virtual. I'll be talking, uh, putting C-sharp in the browser. Uh, basically, I say basically. We'll be talking Blazor, how to get started. And uh, give you some overview and, and got a workshop online, thanks to Microsoft. And a few other people doing a lot of hard work. It takes you through the basics and gets you going and gets you a, a live website at the end of it. It's really pretty cool. Um, and so that's going to start next time. Going through that, I've already got the talk written. But I need to go through the demos again. Make sure they all work. Make sure I understand how they're doing what they're doing. And uh, update my PowerPoint slide on it. And, of course, that PowerPoint slide is going to be on the line. So it'll be lots of fun. So if that's the case, I no longer need that, right? I can edit it. Oh, yeah. This is crazy. Oh, I need my keyboard. My keyboard here. Don't need that anymore. And uh, the to-do list on the screen? Yeah, this ain't gonna work. 
Gotta figure a way, maybe do a little bit better on it. I really, really would like to, I can actually make that work through here. Let's, uh, let's see if I can do a little uh, before I get too tired. Uh, let's work on the power split. What do you think? We're working on the power split. What do I need? What do I, what do I need the power splitter for? I've already drawn out the picture. So I can show you how to do that. Oh, what we've got going on. Let me get this out of the way. Yeah. So, so you guys can see this. We got a power battery. The battery needs to go into two different places. One, it's already going there. I've got it plugged in, coming out of the power. It needs to go to 12 volts, so I can. Well, it's 18 volts coming out of this. It needs to go into 12 volts, so I'm 18 here, so I can bucket down to 12. To go into the motor control so that drives the wheel and the wheels really want 12 volts so they can put a little more in them want we'll to play with that but i know they're nominal 12 volts and that's what we're going to stick with for now the other place it needs to go is here and it's a little bit hard to see this is a five volt rated at five amps the little thing rated at five amps um buck converter for voltage now I could take that lead off of here and put it into there and so I'm bucking 12 volts and bucking down to 5 volts and I'd rather not do that because at some point this thing may draw a significant amount of current because the wheels are doing what they're doing I doubt that's going to happen but no sense in, in worrying about it especially when I've got one 12 volt thing and I can have one major 5 volt thing and I can draw them both off the battery. And then what I can do eventually, if I'm really concerned about the battery power and all that sort of stuff, in this connection right here, I can put uh, uh, a cutoff switch, or very, a bunch of things. Yeah, a bunch of things. Or, and also in this connection right here, I can put in a cutoff switch here so that the motor start running amok. I cut that wire there, I cut it off, just a switch. And then um, that'll make that'll that'll cut the power to the motors, and so it'll stop moving. Um, if you'll see where I've got the other lines drawn here, this is what I'm trying to do with the whiteboard, so I can get you colors and pretty colors and make it look all professional and nice and neat and like, uh, ooh, that guy might know what he's doing. We all know that ain't true. We all know that's not true. Actually, I do know. I do know a little bit. I don't know everything. I know a little bit. Is what, and also with the problem I have with the five volt is that the Latte Panda works off of it, and it's going to use about one somewhere between one point six and one point eight amps when it's going full blast. It's going to start at point five nine. I've got that. I've got the servo board. I've got any kind of sensors. Um, the power the the uh, LED screen that I'm going to put on here it's going to use all of that going in there and um, what I want to have happen is that uh, I get 5 volts but then I want to have some kind of distribution mechanism uh, so so I get one all of these are going to have grounds and I want the grounds to all run back home I don't want a floating ground anywhere. It causes all kinds of problems. 
and I want all the ground to be the same. So in this case, the ground comes out of here, it's wired to these two, and that's that's those grounds all wire back to here. Then I'll do a little bus system here, and I'll I'll describe that here maybe in a minute. I gotta get some power wired up first. And then um and then we got the bus system going on here, and I want both a hot and a ground side on the bus. So they're all the same ground, they're all coming back the same way. And uh, we're going to run some things away. To that end, um, I went out this weekend and, and managed to find some 20 gauge stranded wire. And according to every chart, 20 gauge is supposed to hold up to nine amps. So that's going to hold almost twice what we can put out. Uh, certainly, uh, this the board manufacturer here says we need to run that, even though it's five amps capable. Really, anything with four and a half amps, you got problems, and and even close to that, a bunch you're going to need to run a bunch. You're going to need to run some heat sinks, which I have some laying around. So we'll throw some heat sinks on them when we start getting closer to that number. Um, and. You may notice this little wire here going off to the motor controller. You're like, a oh, motor controller? What, doesn't it get power from the motors? And you're like, yes, it does. However, however, What happens when these motors get stuck or stalled and it starts drawing down the power? All right, Magic 8 Box, what happens? I can read your mind. You probably should be ashamed. Well, uh, you're probably right. I should be ashamed of myself, but that's not really what happens. What happens is when this starts pulling hard, the only reason the motor controller was working before is because I had a USB plugged into it. A couple of other things going on there and and there's a little bit of power that gets drank off of this 12 volts it runs the logic on the motor controller but when the rubber hits the road literally that uh, power all goes in the motor and none of it is actually in the logic so it causes motor control to reset the problem with that is it becomes, it becomes freewheeling when it resets. So whatever these motors were going and doing before, they just keep going and doing, and you get no control over them at all. So this five volts here is going to be power specific for the logic on the motor controller because it's essentially it's a little Arduino on there doing things. So I actually want to do a little hardware today to start things off because I've been doing software all day, banging my head into a wall. And so uh, let me get uh, situated here. And we'll do some solder. Uh, do, 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 do. We'll need that in a little bit. Alrighty. I'm going to put that in a better place. These things, they're just, I just 3D printed them, they're little triangles, I use them in woodwork and other things. It's just something to keep them off the, off the, off the ground for painting and finishing and that sort of stuff. They just come in real handy uh, because what you don't want to have to do is fire this thing up and have some errant electrical signal turn on your wheels while it's sitting on the ground and can't go nowhere. Never ends well for anybody. Technically I only need to have three points. 
but I'm going with four at the moment. Three points make a plane. Let's make sure I can do that without too much crazy. You know, I can, but that's not big enough. Not tall enough. I do have some taller ones. I did not 3D print these. Uh -huh. Got them from the store before I had a 3D printer. The reason I 3D printed them, the ones I had, because I ran out and I needed more. So a 3D printer to the rescue. There you go. That's much better. there this is Arduino stuff electrical connections all right there Some more of those coming down. I got a feeling. Put them right there. This. I didn't clean up after my last session. This is what happens. I had to clean up before I could do something. So I got to do stuff to do stuff. Which is kind of a problem. I'm trying to be better at it. I really am sorry about that. Oops. I really, really am. What am I doing? Oh, yeah. It's important. Ingest, enrich, explore. That's what you're doing when you're actually doing uh, AI. You're ingesting a bunch of data. You're enriching that data, and in other words, cleaning it up so you can see what the hell is going on, and then you're exploring what that data tells you. Okay, so here's what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to come out of here. That is female with a male. We're going to run a bit of wire to two more females. Okay, we won't worry about the 5 volts tonight. But that'll get us back into 12 over here. Yeah, that'll work. And then when we hook up the 5, we're going to use 16 gauge wire for all of this. And then when we get ready to go for the five volt, then I'll use my, uh, well, we might want to do one of those because we might as well sort it up. Five volt, we're going to use a 10 gauge, a 20 gauge wire to handle all the rest of it. What do you think? Hmm? Okay, I'm going to need to get more out of the way. You know what I didn't do? I didn't advertise, I didn't push. I need to push really, really hard. Hmm. 
Magic 8 box. What should I do next? Should I solder a bunch of stuff? Or should I upload YouTube videos? Absolutely. Well, I guess I got to do both of them then. So I'm soldering stuff first, though. All right. I don't need a ton of wire here. But I do need enough. I do need also, while I'm getting things together, I need me some shrink tube. Shrink tube. Shrinky, shrinky, shrinky tube. Let me unwind this a bit. We're going to need that. Unwind this a bit. I got a hundred feet of twenty gauge. Think that'll be enough? I hope so. Um, I got that. I had to go to Altex to get that because uh, went by fries. I don't even. I don't even know why anybody goes to fries and what even tries. When I went there, it was on Saturday morning. Hardly anybody was there. I can't imagine buying anything from those people. It was just sad. Hey, I see somebody join me. Shout out. Say hello. What's going on? So I'm just getting prepared to do a little soldering here for a wire, um, for a, a, a power coupling to get a wire off of this, and then so I can finish powering this, and so eventually do some uh, motor moving around. Um, with that I need a little shrink tube. Da, 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 da. Is there a good enough shrink tube? Yeah, that'll be good there. I'm gonna that's gonna be four wires into that instead of three. That'll be okay. And so Let's uh, let's make a plan. Hey, babies, how you doing? I'm having some of your spice pecans, they're pretty good. Uh huh. Like their uh, first weekend, it's only like. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't forget the deep fried Oreos. You got a lot of deep fried Oreos. Yeah, so um, I can't do it on Friday. But I, it's like. Not done, well. The MSP thing is that date. For October, you do. 26 October. I'll be coming back from Vegas. Okay. That's, that's. All right. Mm. The guns really are good. You know what may be better than the shrink tube on that? Thinking out loud here. Can be better as just some of my colorful electrical tape. Make sure everything's electrical up. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Thoughts? Fears? 
because actually all this really needs to be is about that long. Anything longer than that? I think we got a problem. And this we can tape that there. Split it up, tape that there. You don't have to worry about trying to do heat getting shrink to on everything. Oh, and in case in case anybody wants to play a you don't win nothing other than bragging rights, but uh, eventually you'll win something. And I missed on the Plinko, and I missed on the drop. I'm sad. Oh, hmm. They're all away. They don't love me anymore. That's all right. I think that will do me right there. So let's do this and get that, get this, I need it to be about yay long, I double that out there, alrighty, and what I can do, ooh that's pretty good right there. Good. Then I can, yes, split them up a little bit. I don't have to. Well, technically, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to sort them together. What do you think about them apples? Then we'll cut it here, strip those two nice and even, and away we will go. Uh, I guess I lost somebody. Oh, well. Hopefully somebody will be back. Hmm. Earthquake. Need some more of those. A little sorter. Huh. Sort of hope Fran and I have never comes around. She sees what I'm doing. She'll kill me. You're like, hey. What are you doing? You're messing up. And she would be right. Turn on my solder in her. Away we go. I do have that way too hot though.
Hold on. And we'll just go hot. What the hell? People show up, people leave. It's cool. Tend up together. All right. In on these guys just a little bit. Yeah, red goes to the flat side, gotta remember that. Righty. Now I gotta do something a little heftier. Now let's go ahead and cut these. Get them all together. All right. Yeah, those are way too long. See how much lead I have on those? Those are way, way, way too long. Clean up the spare metal bits. So it will cause problems. And now what do we have here? Do I have my close-up working? Yeah, let me move. Let me move the close-up in on the gizmos. We're all cares to see. Overhead me in the close-up. There you go. I need to sit down. There's, uh, there's ABCs of most things when it comes to this. And if you never heard that before, the ABCs of things. Well, when you're doing this stuff, ABCs of soldering is A always B, B, C comfortable.
you're not having to rush, you're not in an error, you know, in a state where you're going to cause lots of problems, that sort of stuff. Nice and easy. Easy peasy. I probably could use a set of helping hands here, but that's one of the reasons I tend them up. Well, one, my, self, my helping hands I have floating around here just suck. We'll do the common side first. Just heat everything up. And if I'm really lucky, it'll heat everything up and I'll let go of it. Because I put a little on there and tart it up. Now that's the worst soldering job ever. So we get a little more solder on that. Yeah, I need to practice soldering with these things more. That's what happens. All right. Let's see if we got something that helps. Of course, you know I don't. Right, let's see what happens here. Oh, I'm sorting on the wrong side anyway. No, no, I sort on the wrong side. Let's make that a little bit easier to deal with. Okay, let me get some of that junk over there. Okay, what are we doing with this? I do have some helping hands, but like I say, these things suck. Suck it, so hopefully they won't suck it so bad this time. Okay, they may not suck it this bad this time. Actually, may do what I want them to do. All right, let's see if they're going to do what I want them to do. Yeah, I got him free 10, man. Oh, and uh, welcome, Blind. How you doing? Thanks for the follow the other day, too, by the way. I think uh, you see my close-up.
Yep. I, uh, I haven't done a lot of soldering here as of late. Thanks for the tip, so. Thank you. Also, uh, if you want to play a drop, you can do a drop and a plinko. Thanks for, uh, thanks to, thanks to InstaFluff. Uh, dang it. I really like these. I, mm, I've had these helping hands forever, and the times they've actually helped have been really small. Ooh, that went pretty good. Now, flip it over. Um, what I'm planning on doing, when I'm putting these Ys in here, um, I guess, yeah, I guess I will do, after I get them soldered up, uh, split them apart and then uh, shrink to them. Uh, I don't have a good, I don't have a good, uh, there you go. That'll work. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Here, let me show you what I'm doing here. I'll take a, take a moment's pause since uh, your first time really here. Um, so, I am a Microsoft MVP. I like playing with software and hardware, which is... Uh, a bit crazy and so what I'm building is a robot so the idea behind this robot is I'm gonna have it do a few things but I'm using it more of a as a learning platform and as well as uh, this is what I like to do for fun um, this is a Latte Panda, which is a whole Windows operating, it's a system on a chip, so it's got a complete Windows operating system on an Arduino built in. And, um, and so I can run a complete, uh, uh, and I'm trying to, so I can run a, I can run machine learning on here, plug in cameras, do all sorts of things. And I'm currently in the process of making sure I got enough power for the motor controller um, and uh, the other thing that I'm doing to power all of this and I've 3D printed the red stuff by the way um, I'm using my Roby batteries for power sources and so I got it printed up so I've got a power source coming out I have a buck converter here that's going to be 12 volts I've got another buck converter in the wings is going to be five volts to power all the five volt stuff going around um that sort of thing and uh yeah and so i'm just working through it i, I spent a lot a lot of time working through the software to make sure that i could indeed run uh ross 2 um uh, robot operating system on on top of windows on top of uh that latte panda and so now I'm getting it together enough hardware where I can actually prove all that stuff actually does what it does. So there's that. So let me get back over here. All right. And so now I'm just uh, walking through all of this, soldering it up, and making uh, fun things happen. That's going to be better than I thought it was. I 
I guess I'm gonna split them up because I need to. Is that a good? That's a pretty good size on that, isn't it? No, it's not. Let me go find a smaller size. No, I, I am a Microsoft MVP. I am a, what I do during the day is I'm something called a full stack .NET developer. And I write essentially accounting programs with Microsoft SQL Server all the way up through uh, Angular and that sort of stuff. And so what I really like doing is playing with hardware. And I don't have any students. I am. I've been, I'm still a student because I've been learning my entire life, and I, don't, I always maintain that the day I stop learning will probably be the day I die. And leave me some shrink too. Need a little smaller shrink too. I got several. Ooh, maybe this this is good enough. I got stuff laying around everywhere. Yeah. I am a self-student for hardware, exactly right. Um, I, when I was growing up, uh, dad uh, was what you might want to call a jack of all trade, master of none, and I kind of got that from him. And um, and I just have a got a bit of ADD things always from. From the get-go, since I was, I don't know, I think the first electronic thing I blew up was probably about 10 or 12 years old. I'm over 50 now, and I've been doing this on and off for a long time, and now I've been to a place where I get to do lots of fun stuff. Do a lots of, in yeah. And so now I'm just playing. Hopefully I can share some stuff. Hopefully uh, people may learn something from either my mistakes or their successes in not doing what they're seeing me do. Yeah, as a Microsoft developer, I'm bent that way, right? I could have, uh, this thing does run Linux, and the, the ROS 2, op, the ROS operating system, there's one and two, both run on Linux, but since I'm a Microsoft MVP and I like to do Microsoft these sorts of things, I go that way. However, I'm kind of a black box. For instance, the Magic 8 box here I do. Make it so. Yeah, that's, uh, I've got, a, I did, a, I, this is a uh, Magic 8, 8 box. Basically, I uh, put a button on a Sony's presence and make some sound on it. And it, I've got 32 little quips in there. I would find a scapegoat. Yeah, and most are all negative. And, but I have a good old time with it. Um, but th all that right there is running, even though it's running on the Azure, um, sphere platform no take that back it's not doing that that's all c plus plus and uh c and straight up nothing to do with microsoft whatsoever it just kind of depends what i get in the mood to do actually and one of the things is because i do whack on microsoft all day long uh, there's uh there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of synergy that happens where I can use some skills uh, in my day job and also in my my hobby. I got a 3D printer over here. I do some 3D printing. I do some modeling and all the 3D print stuff. I uh, built my own about three or four years ago, and it's still running over here. Lots of that kind of stuff. I printed that as well to help all that stuff together. That's actually soldering wires together. I, I never printed that before, and I'm like, well, let's print it see if it helps. I need a helping hand, because I don't like the helping hands I had. Put you up for the moment. All right. Come on, hot air gun. Do your duty.
There you go. Now I need one red going each one. So let's uh, see if I can split these out a little bit. What do you do? What do you do, blind? Blind, blind via? Is that what I call you? Is blinds good enough? So what do you do for uh, during the day when you're not having uh, not having to go to work, so to speak? Maybe you don't work. Maybe you do. I don't know. These are going to be a little more difficult. I don't have one that small. Do that. There you go. You're not gonna do before we go too far. Yeah, I think we want to do that. Ah, not big enough. It's all right. Not so bad. Wow. Okay. I got you. Wow. You know, that's I've I've done this a long time. I mean, when I got when I say when I got started, when I first started doing any of things with you know dad electronics that kind of stuff he had tubes and that kind of thing i had me an electronics 151 electronics kit and that was a <laughs> i i wore that thing out you know resistors and all that sort of stuff and capacitors and buzzer things and i wore all that out and i just i've just always tinkered and toyed with that the entire time I was in school for electrical engineering for a while, and um, it, what happened there was AC-DC circuits killed me. Um, I don't want to say that uh, I'm not an intelligent person or a, you know, a capable person, it's just that uh, I'm in college and um, I probably didn't study enough, I'll tell you that right now. And. Uh, never got around I, I tried to make my own board a couple times in fact I have an example of things oh yeah you want to see something stupid I'll show you something stupid um Look at this thing. I, I forgot I had this over and I saw it the other day and and uh, you know maybe this is might or might be not be interesting to anybody. Um, this is a project I built when I was 15, 16 years old. Yeah. 
And let's just say, I, I don't know how your electrical engineering uh, school uh, was exactly, but ACDC circuits was the weed class. Uh, we start with 140 people in the class and end up with 40 every semester, like clockwork. And I just didn't apply myself enough. So, so what you're looking at here is a project I made when I was about 16, maybe 17 years old. And I saw Radio Electronics. They said, how to build your own laser. So I saved up money. And if you look inside here, that is a real live helium neon laser tube. Of course, it doesn't work anymore because the helium escapes over time. But that is a glass tube that I bought and put in there. And I got up and did this monstrosity. All that black there is not burnt. Let's well, see, I'm losing connections there as well. All that black there is not burnt. That is uh, spray on insulation so it didn't arc everywhere. Because what happens is you put in five volts here at a couple of amps and you go through the, uh, the ladder network, capacitors, diodes, capacitors, diodes, capacitors, diodes, capacitors, diodes, and it builds up to an initial charge of about 10,000 volts. Uh, it goes through this uh, triac, which actually burned out a long time ago, and so I jury rigged a way to get it to fire. Uh, I needed me a resistor that could hold some stuff, and so I got me a potentiometer to do some things in there. And this is all just hack work for a 17 year old trying to make some stuff work. And um, it did work for a long time, and had a great fun. I had a great time with it. Conf conformal coating. Okay, I've never heard that before. And I had a great time with it. I still have it to this day. Uh, of course, like I say, it's not going to work. If the electronics actually could, I'm trying the 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 caps, uh, these uh, mylar um, caps. I don't know how they how they hold up versus the electrolytics. I know I've got a couple electric glues in there, and I'm sure they've dried out. Um, but uh, uh, so. I don't know. I did that and it's still holding on to it. Maybe just memories, you know, that sort of thing. That sort of thing. And so I've been, I've been mucking around for a very long time. I can't say that I've done a good job or a bad job, but um, I will tell you another thing I learned was uh, this circuit didn't always fire when it's supposed to be. And so I go, uh, I go to test it with my voltage probe, and um, that uh, big capacitor here has about ten thousand volts built up on it. And I am a ground, and let's just say I, I learned the hard way really, really fast multiple times in a row about grounding your grounding yourself before you go looking at things. Or I should say grounding your test probes. Lots and lots of fun stuff there. All right. So I am going to need one of each of these. I need to tin those up. And just make sure I got an okay thing there. Uh, that's a little much. Eh. Straighten that up nice. That'll be good. Now I'll be, I need a little bit off of that. Am I going to want to? That's a good question. Yeah, I wonder if I can get some, just enough shrink tube on that. Make a difference.
Make sure it's yeah, that'll be fine. This is too big. I don't need a lot, I just need a little. Get you to the side there. Let's get you tinned up. Been working on my uh, layout of my workbench and stuff. I'm a bit of a pack rat, kind of a messy fellow. Try not to be, and just get excited about going and doing. And before you know it, I got a mess happening. All right, maybe these will come in handy again. And hold on to them nice and tight. Tin them up. A little bit of solder. One of the first things I ever did on all this was a wire wrap project. That was really cool. And I was at the, kind of the end of that. I'm like, I had no idea what that was. And Dad worked for Marathon Eterno, and they did their own electronics. He got me down to the electronics lab, and they were showing me a few things. And so I got to wire wrap some stuff up and showed off my laser and a few other things. Come on, get my there. You go. And I got a lot of support from those folks trying to do various things. All right. I need a pair of red and blacks. We'll start with the black. Oop. Oh. About to make a serious fatal flaw right there. Let's go ahead and fix all of those. Forgetting the shrink tube. How many times do you forgot the shrink tube, man? I say man. I mean, I have no idea. I didn't get that tinned well enough, so we'll start right there. Come on. Come on, tin it up. There you go. I'm about to be out of solder, but I have more. Let's go here.
Cool. I'm put a lot more. Make sure it's nice and sucked up on there. Yeah. Not enough over here. There you go. Cool. Yeah. <coughs> I think I lost. Let's see what we got. We've got a nice solid. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Look at me go the wrong way with those things. Doesn't matter. One of these days, I'm going to know how I want things laid out. Got a good hit there. Yep, all the way around. One of these days, I'll print me a better set of helping hands. <sighs> right down to two. Ah. There we go. Ah, a little burnt. One of these days I'll get it where I won't be burnt.
Now. Little shrink tube action. Man, when they made this shrink tube. I'm an idiot. You watch me do that, blind? Yeah, they do. Look what I did. That's supposed to be... I put a male on there, and that's supposed to be a female. It's supposed to be that one. Oh, well. Get to go undo that. Yep, wrong connector. But luckily, things weren't really easy with these, and hopefully they'll continue to be that way. Oh, come on, get over there. There's that. Split. Split. Grab that. Tear it off. And things were going so well, too. Isn't that kind of how it is? Hey, I got this under control. No, you don't. All right. And I thought I was done on the soldering thing. But I guess not. I say done. I thought I'd done so well on this one. Come on, let's just heat up and come right off. Yep. Let it cool down for a second. Get some more shrimp tube. I just thought to myself, hey, that went really cool. That went really slick. Nope. Thanks for playing. Um, it does. But what I'm doing this for is let me, uh, let me let this cool off a little bit, and I can show you my diagram that I've got going on here. Get my pointer stick. So this is kind of a block diagram I drew up and using all my artistic skill, as in none. So this is the uh, this is the uh, Rarobi battery, and I've got uh, one buck converter over here that I wanted to be tunable because I wasn't sure what kind of motors I was going to be using, and so currently I've got it set up to do 12 volts. So I'm pushing 18 volts into 12, and, and, and to the 12, and out comes out comes uh, into this buck. Out comes 12 for the motor controller, and the motor controller has. Um, uh, disperses that between the two different motors um, and then I uh, so I've got 12 volts running around and I've got uh, the other thing the reason I'm doing a split is because the most of the sensors the actual logic part of this motor controller um, the latte panda all that stuff runs off of 5 volts so I've got another buck converter there and I want to just drag the power off the main source to do the two so it gives me a couple of options here, I think. At some point, if I want to put a, uh, a a current meter here, I can measure current for the whole thing. Also, I can make a kill switch that kills it here, or I can make a kill switch here that kills the motors if things start going awry, and still leaves all of this. The problem with putting a kill switch here is that this Latte Panda is an operating system. So I kill that, 
I stand a chance of corrupting file systems and all that sort of stuff. I'd rather not do that, but it happens. I've done it a bunch. It seems to be okay. I've been knock on wood. I gotten lucky on all that kind of stuff. But I do know that when I'm running this thing, I want it to be autonomous. And if it's autonomous, I'm gonna to have to have some way to disconnect the motors from having go juice. Um, because if things start running awry, it's probably gonna be faster than I ever am. So I needed some way to do that, and I wanted to be able to do that and still be able to just uh, also get the five volts to the rest of it so you can still communicate with it if you have to. So that's basically the bog diagram of how things are going to go together. I'm not sure all the sensors and stuff on it. I do know I've got a Latte Panda. I do know I have a motor controller, and I'm putting it on a base, and the motors themselves are differential drive. And this motor controller here is about as neat as it gets. Um, just about as neat as it gets because that's essentially another Arduino in there and it's pit control so I've got encoders on the motor so it knows how fast each one of the motors goes and I'm using it in RC mode which means I've got one joystick that goes left up and forward and back and I got the other joystick essentially I don't really have joysticks they're all computer controlled um, values I've got one for left and right and one for forward and back and this uh, motor controller is set up to do all the differential calculations so if I want to go full forward or full reverse it's pretty easy if I want to turn left or turn full right full, full left full right that's pretty easy what if I want to go forward and angle a little bit to the left to the right well that's it will slow down these motors in, in a proportion to actually make that kind of curve possible so that's kind of what uh, that's kind of where I'm going with all that I guess one of these days I'll draw up better pictures or something. The idea is I had a, uh, I've got a whiteboard working on here trying to get some ways to figure out how to uh, put up like a to-do list on the uh, on the stream so people can come on and see what I'm in the process of trying to get done. You know that sort of thing. I'm really new at all this Twitch streaming things. Got no clue. As, uh, you know, and I'm happy. That, by the way, thanks for coming by and hanging out with me. Uh, some days I'm hanging out with here just, just literally myself. But the thing is, I would have been here anyway doing this regardless. Uh, because uh, this is the hobby. This is what I want to play on. And it motivates me. Not that I need motivation to come and do this thing. But it, it, it sets aside time where then I can schedule my time around it between work and real life and, and all that all that stuff that's going on that tends to get into the way um, of, of, of the world. And I, this makes me happy. And so I just definitely schedule that a little bit. So, again, thanks for showing up. And I see the welcome there. And that's awesome. And I, I told, like I just said, I'd be in here doing this anyway. And if I get to share it with somebody and somebody gets to give me some feedback and, and say, hey, no, you're not doing that right, or I got a better idea. In fact, uh, here in a second, uh, and let me get done with this. I got some power routing. I'm talking about any idea how to route power. What I mean is um, I'm going to use some lever wire nuts that I've seen. I do it the old school way a lot. of. I was planning on doing it the old school way with a bunch of bus bars like this. And by the way, this is how I measure high amp currents. Um, I'm measuring the voltage across that, essentially a shunt resistor right there. Thank you, uh, a little bit of electrical engineering knowledge. Help me with that. Turns out a 10 gauge wire at one foot has got one milliohm going on there. But yeah, bus bars, terminal blocks. Yeah, I've got the, I don't have the right terminology. You're right. They are terminal blocks. And so what I've thought about doing instead of this, I'm gonna let that cool just a little bit more. Let me see if I can pull up a, a web page right fast to show you what I'm what I'm talking about. Um, uh, Cause I got an Amazon order coming in tomorrow. That just happens to come in tomorrow. Here, let me show you my. These things. They say they're good to 32 amps. 
They'll take everything from a uh, 28 gauge up to, I believe, a, a 12 gauge, 10 gauge, 12 gauge wire. And um, with the uh, with the amount of space that I'm going to have in there, I think it I think they'll work pretty good for what I go. I want I want one for all my the plus five bolts and one for all my grounds. I'm trying to avoid uh, chaining grounds between all these bits and pieces of modules because if one ground comes less loose, then then you know uh, fun ensues. So I. I'm trying to keep them all back together, keep them all so they come back to a solid ground. And I don't know if uh, you have an opinion of those one way or another, but I've got some coming. I'm going to try them because it should be an easy push together kind of thing and turn on. Should be, but every time I say should, um, uh, sometimes it works. Yeah, way more. In fact, I can only put five amps into them. The thing is, I would have gotten smaller ones, but these come with a couple of things, right? Um, 32 amps is way more than they need, but they also come with the mounting connectors on them and a few other things that um, I'm like, well, okay, uh, we can do that, right? My power requirements, I can tell you right now, the wheels, the, real, the wheels as I've been running on them, uh, unloaded or run 100 milliamps at full speed. I suspect once I get uh, once I get a little weight on them and run around the ground, they'll, run, they'll pull a little bit more than that. So that's a couple amps off each wheel, which is I, I, this thing is overpowered for what I have. Uh, the the motor controller I've got going on, the motor controller I have going on is uh, is something called a Robo Claw. And I've got some of those things hanging out around here, too. Oh, come on. Um, we've got, I've got the 2 by 7 amp. So each motor, and on, on the motor controller itself, I can pull 7 amps a channel. Uh, or... Um, one motor at 15 amps if I, I ganged them together it's really a, it's really a nice system really a nice system let's see if i can they got a picture of they got a data sheet of it here somewhere yeah see it kind of close up or closer up anyways that's kind of what you're looking at um, you got these uh, connectors up here. I've got ferrules running into those. Uh, um, uh, you got a USB controller on the thing if you want. And um, it turns out that these, uh, these where it says C right here, these are actually plug-ins that match right up to um, RC motor controllers. Yeah, they they're probably gonna work. And you're right. I should be putting on my nerd hat and um um and you're right. Is this overkill? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm I, this is one of the first times I've Well, I've been tinkering on these electronic parts like this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And this is the first time I've putting all these little bits and pieces together in one thing. And I'm tr I'm actually I know I shouldn't need to impress anybody, I get that, but I've got a local group here, the Dallas uh, Personal Robotics Group, and I see what they do, and I'm like, man, I, I need to, I, 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 I want to fit in with those folks. And so maybe I'm a little overhead, a little overkill, but uh, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. When they come in tomorrow, I'll, I'll try them. What's going to happen is they'll come in tomorrow. I'm going to put them in here and see if they don't. Here, let's see if I can get back to where I want to go. Where I'm thinking about they need to fit, by the way. Is is going to be down in here. If I can make this one. I've got a bunch of space down in the bottom here. Uh, I figured I would route the power all the way around in here. With the motor controller down there being the power because hopefully once i get that connected i won't have to connect it up very much 
This uh, bit will fit on the back here, like that. I've got a uh, LED screen for viewing some output, and then uh, I'm thinking about putting uh, a swivel up here with a camera on it to do some machine learning and those sorts of things, and plugging it right into this fellow here, which takes USB input. Since it's a Windows operating system, it knows how to talk to cameras and all sorts of things without having to do a lot of extra work on that. And currently this runs to a screen over here and um, hopefully before I get done tonight, well I don't know, I've only got a few more minutes to go before I, I, I have bedtime. I don't know that I'm going to make it to that end, but uh, I will certainly next time. will certainly next time. Things always take longer than you expect them to. Yeah. So, and I did put my nerd hat on a little bit. The, uh, the wire for powering all the five volts is, that's a 20 gauge wire right there and that's supposed to hold nine amps from local. So that's double what I could possibly put out in my buck converter that I have. I figured that safety margin is, is, is worth it, worth that. And I had to go all over, I'm not all over town. I had to go to a couple, two, three places. <laughs> thank you thank you um but i i do do that i'm at the very least when i do this i want to make sure i have enough uh things like uh, those things are running 32 amps there that's overkill um and i don't I, I i'm trying to keep engineering principles in my head at least for a little bit like if, you know if i've got something that's if we've got enough of thing if I have twice of that, I'm guaranteed for any little slop and variance. So that's kind of how that goes. That's kind of how it goes. That's kind of where I'm coming from anyways. Uh, let's see if I can finish soldering this together. And... and I got one other solder thing to do when I get done with this to solder in the uh, 20 gauge stuff to get me some. I don't really, actually I don't need that to get the power going on. I even nerded out and I hope I've nerded the right way because I was looking these are XT30 connectors and you'll notice on the flat side here I've got power running in I'm making that the standard everywhere on the robot so every time I have an XT30 connector I know plus is going on the flat side of the connector I think that's the standard of an industry every bit of research that I've done and every bit of picture that I've found where people have got these things together seems to indicate that but I have there is always a little bit of doubt in my mind that I've done things just a little bit wrong and it's not really wrong because it's just my thing but if we could do uh, you know it's one of these hey that's what the industry does let's see if we can do what the industry does all right come on there you go Some stragglers. Well, that is a bit of a mess. All right. Now, if I could just stay away from melting the damn plastic because I'm getting too close to it. 
actually, when I say getting too close to it, I'm just touching it because I'm being sloppy. Um, I need to solder some more. Anybody else you follow in the hardware world? Interesting, fun, all that kind of stuff? I think I picked you up with the uh, two array. Yeah. Um, the XT thirties, I did a look up on that. They're good to like thirty amps or something. The uh, the most RC cars that you see running around these days, from my nerding out, as you put it, um, are running XT sixties. They're good for sixty amps, and because uh, I don't know if you looked how some of those cars run and go and do, some of those cars have a really high burst current to get up and go and do right. And uh, so I figured if it's good enough for the RC world, it's probably good enough for me. Hey, look at that. We have insulation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I was, uh, oh, cool. Um, I, I, I came to either your channel or some channel that you were on uh, through a raid, and I forget who that was. And I remember you saying, hey, you do hardware, and you immediately followed me up. And I thought that was awesome. And um, I'm just looking for more interesting hardware people because I, uh, I got Bald Engineer. I've got Noise Bro. I think that's how you say his name. Um, there's um, there's a Rosen guy out of uh, out of our, out of Australia that I ran across the other evening that builds controllers and stuff. Pretty pretty cool fellow actually. And um, I've got a bunch of software people that I run around with um, at the moment that I'm kind of building up, but doing the same kind of thing. I want to build up community of people, so we're all having a go. Yeah, um, uh, I, I like both of them for different reasons. I'm also I'm trying to get some fun stuff like uh, this thing here, my magic, my magic eight box. You know, it's like, hey, magic eight box, is uh, today going to be a good day? You are funny. I will kill you last. You know, some project I built a long time ago, and I figured, oh, got it. R phone call. Ooh, look at that. That is actually cool. You know what I need? I need one more of those. And I'm gonna need some more of these.
this. I need this. That's good. Five ampness of it. Turn it high at all. Let's start here. Turn it up a little bit. Glasses.
Cut a little bit off the end there. Come on. Hmm. Now let's do a little, uh, sucking away. Get that out of the, get all that extra junk out of the Ah, damn it. Overheated it. That's all right. And the first one of those I messed up. Recycle time. That should be about perfect if I can make it fit in there. Just stay right there, buddy. Make sure I got a good clean all the way around. I do. Awesome. I do know that if I ever lose my software coding job, job I do not need is soldering on XT30 connectors. Good connection? No. We are not good. We are good now. <sighs> Got a little brown on here. Smaller. Ah. I can't use that. But I did do. Yeah, yeah. I that's one thing I have yet to do. 
that I do want to do is uh, deal with SM, you know, service mount stuff. I've got on my uh, wish list, my wish list of uh, parts from Amazon and, you know, things to tackle because of um, various bits and pieces to have. Uh, figure out some of that S. Oh, that's my alarm that says, hey, you need to go to bed. Uh, the through hole stuff. I'm pretty good. I feel pretty good with most of that, even though I'm a little bit overzealous with the heat sometimes. The SMT stuff, man, I I just murder that stuff when I go to do that. Oh, I think I got a little extra insurance here. I'm trying to be all coolly coolly. Hey, look at me doing uh, doing install things. Yeah, it'll look nice. Yeah, it almost looked like somebody didn't know what they were doing. Right? And that's going to be for the 5 volts that comes out, and I'll deal with that tomorrow. So the idea of all this is I've got that goes in, that's 5 volts that come in, and I made me another piece of cable here so I can feed all of this here with my... Uh, with my bench top power supply for doing debugging stuff so I'm not burning up batteries. Yes, babies? I want to know if you want to add on the extra $7.50 $7. corn dog? Yep. Um, you know, the last time we had those corn dogs, they were not as expected, so I'd say no this time. Because we may end up going to Sonic to get extra corn dogs for the State Fair of Texas should be the best corn dog. Uh, Holy moly. Does it have, oh, does it have the cheese dogs? I would take two cheese, two, two cheese, and cheese we're doing that. Yeah, just one corn dog sauce. No. Uh, you know, I've never found the cookbook all that great. I don't know if you have <coughs> on it. The I things really we just, look don't, at it. I just we don't really, you know, we just didn't, we just don't cook things out of it, right? For, for two of us. Yeah, hold on a second, babes. Hey, uh, hey, Blind. Uh, that was my alarm going off saying, "Hey, it's my bedtime." I think I'm in a good, pretty good stoppage point tonight. Um, just for community sake, I'm going to raid you over to one of my favorite places, which has got nothing to do with hardware. Uh, if you find some hardware folks, and uh, yeah, whisper them to me, and I'll be happy to join on with them and that kind of stuff too. For more hardware, the better. And do a little software, and we'll all have a great old time. And uh, I usually finish this up by uh, uh, every time by going, um, whether it's from my failures or your successes, hope you learned something today. Thanks for dropping by. Hope to see you again. And be safe. And now we're going to raid over to something called the Donut Key. Yeah, the Donut King. He's great. He's great. I hope you think he's great, too. All right. Yeah, the Donut King. He's great. Oh, that's great. He's great.